Good morning YouTube. I hope that you guys are all doing well. I am starting off this video where I just finished the last one. Well, the next day. It's Tuesday the 1st of June and we are in peak week. This morning, I'm not going to lie to you. Hold on, let me grab my coffee. Oh, it's a beautiful sunny day. We've finally got some fucking nice weather. It's been so shit here in the UK recently, but it hasn't really mattered because I've been on prep, if you know what I mean. Mm, so mm, that one's quite nice um yeah this is the first day that i've woken up in a really fucking long time and actually felt like a human like i can't explain i woke up today and i was like my body isn't screaming at me like what and it's reflected in my physique my check-in this morning i'm so much less inflamed compared to usual like I don't think I realised how much inflammation I was holding um, because it's all kind of just like starting to wash away now. Um, I need to stop chatting shit because um, usually after doing my check in, now that it's about half six, seven, I'd be going to um, do my cardio and do my posing, which I will. But I've got a call with my business mentor, Adam. He is over in Dubai, so he's four hours ahead. So for me, it doesn't really matter because I get up this early anyway. Um, but we're going to have a catch up call about business. And then I will head to go and do reduced cardio and steps are only at 10k today compared to the 14k that they usually have been at. So I get to put my feet up today. Hey, Adam, Hi. you all right? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. It's peak week, so like I'm not having to go and do a fuck ton of cardio every single day at the moment, so it's pretty good. What's the um, what's the plan throughout the week? So just tapering down cardio and steps. I don't need to be given much food until closer to the show day, just because I'm more heavily muscled for bikini. So we're just gonna try and keep me slightly topped up. Um, but yeah, I actually get to put my feet up a little bit, which is ridiculous because I don't think until now, having stopped a little bit, have I realised I genuinely think my soul had left my body. <laughs> like, it wasn't great. Yeah, it's not until you get to that final stage where you get told to relax a bit that you're like, oh, okay, now I feel like I've been hit by a bus. Yeah. Um, is this going to be your first show? Mm hmm Yeah, first yeah. ever show. Yeah, so, um... This will be the first one. I've got another two planned after that, but things will be done and dusted hopefully by um, end of July. So after that, you know, I can't wait to just eat food. But for me, my first show was just like a complete blur. Mm. And I just don't really remember much of it. And I wish that in my first year of competing that I had done two or three because the first one was just like not knowing where to go and not knowing what to expect. Yeah. I didn't really enjoy it that much because of that. Uh, yeah. I think because you'll be guided, I guess, by, I think, it, is it Danny you're being coached by? Yeah. I'm sure, she'll guide you through it, so you'll enjoy it a bit more than I did. I felt like just a like sheep in headlights. Part of me would just say to you this week, just like, just look after your clients and don't do anything else in the business. And yeah. just enjoy the final week of the show. That's the plan. Yeah. <laughs> this week I've just been um, restructuring all of my clients so that, oh my goodness, I'm actually like putting them in the week rather than, you know, having to work seven days a week. I now like have an extra 35, 40 hours a week, which is lovely. So I'm going to have my weekends back. It's pretty good feeling, eh? Hey? Honestly, I could have cried. I, gen I almost did, like when I realised that I actually had so much more time than usual. Yeah, it's honestly when you, especially for you at the moment, because you're in prep, you've got so much time taken from there. But eventually when you won out of the uh, competitions and you're just fully online, the time you just bought yourself back is huge. Yeah, it's felt so much like so much more natural and easy now. Like those bits that you called me out on, I've just been practicing them a lot, so I've just been trying to get it to be now second nature. So I, I'm feeling pretty happy with things, especially like. Obviously the back pose trying to stand up straight a little bit more. I think it's weird, like, I I know that when there's judges and when there's a stage, I'm going to switch on, if you know what I mean. It's very hard in terms of, like, up until now, I've just been posing with me, myself and I. So I'll be honest, I've fallen into the trap of, yeah, I can't be able to smile, I feel like shit. So, <laughs> so it's that kind of, like, getting, getting into the routine of, I need to look happy. <laughs>
Wednesday, Wednesday the 2nd of June. I have woken up and for the first time in about eight weeks, I don't have to go and bust my ass on the Stairmaster. It's a, ver it's a very weird feeling. Like it's a really, really weird feeling. Um, I wanna say like, oh, it feels amazing, which, you know, it, it probably should do, but it is weird, like, when something is so part of your daily routine to not have to go and do it anymore. Like, yes, I'm happy that I don't have to push through the physical pain, but then again, I am doing this whole process because sadistically, you do kind of like pushing yourself to your limits and pushing through the pain. So it is a bit of a weird one. However, I have just kind of gotten up this morning and taken things really slow and just taken a little bit of time to like enjoy my morning, some quiet time, some chilled time. I think Danny's probably wondering why the hell have I not checked in already because usually I'd be on a Stairmaster by now, um, which I'm about to do next is put on my bikini and go through some posing. I will still go and do posing um, this morning at the studio just because I'm going to be doing it like every single day up until show so that it just feels really, really fluent and fluid um, and like second nature when I do compete on Sunday. The amount of time that I'm going to save not going on to the Stairmaster, like it's about 40, 45 minutes on there usually. Obviously driving to and from the gym takes me about 10 minutes in total. Getting to the gym, kind of saying hi, getting my stuff ready. Sometimes I do some steps after I've done my cardio. Like it's a good hour and a half extra that I have in the morning, not having to go and do that. So like, I'll show you what I've been doing. I've been watching, I've been watching Bex's post show blues video. So Bex is an incredible figure athlete competing for, well, she's chasing her pro card at the moment. And it was a really insightful video about kind of like what to expect post-show, how to feel, how to go about it. And that's a lot of stuff that I've been kind of like, or content that I've been looking to consume is like how to feel after you've competed. Not how to feel, but what you might go through, how to approach things. And it's really important to understand that when your show is over, it's not just like your show is over and then you carry on with your life. like. You've got to think that you've been so obsessed and consumed by chasing one specific goal for like months and months and months that it's going to be weird to transition back into like normal life because prep is absolutely not normal at all. Um, so yeah, I've been finding it quite insightful just listening to that stuff because obviously I haven't been there yet. So I should probably hurry up and check in. I'm going to go do some posing practice. Then I'm probably just going to run you through some of like the getting ready peak week stuff like all the fucking appointments and things that you've got i'm getting my hair done today it's honestly like just st stupidly long at this point like it's actually too long for what it needs to be on show day so um i need to get i need to figure out what the hell i'm going to do with it which is you know last minute me but it's going to be a good day it's a rest day so i'm chilling today the only thing i have to do is ten thousand steps light 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 work mate light work Okay guys, so it's a little bit later on in the day. Uh, this morning I went and did my posing, ran through things. I actually think that I've overposed a little bit because my um, left hip, which I lean into, is actually really starting to hurt a little bit. Um, I don't know whether I might take tomorrow off posing, like checking in every single day and then rinsing posing practice. Um, also, as you saw yesterday, I had my posing session with Phoebe, where we held me in positions for a really long time, like as if we were in comparisons. So I think I need to just rest it a little bit um, prior to um, obviously show day because I don't want to be sore when I am trying to hold my poses. Yeah, and I've just spent the rest of the day working really. But now it's time to chat peak week. So I want to kind of tell you what things have looked like the last week or so and how things work during peak week. People often have a misconception that peak week is something really special um, where some kind of magic happens but actually just where you get to fucking chill out. That's it. Peak week is essentially just tapering down steps, energy expenditure, cardio and training to give your body a rest. Like the last couple of weeks before you go into peak week is the hardest where you're pounding your body you're really digging deep for getting that last bit of kind of condition that you're looking for and so your body tends to get really inflamed really tired it holds water you look softer you have a bit of a blurred look 
So when you rest up your body and then start to feed up your body, give you some more carbs to, to fill out your glycogen stores and your muscles, your muscles start to pop a lot more, you start to look a whole lot better and a bit more like a bodybuilder. That is peak week. Also in terms of like your, your diet changes a little bit, trying to take out anything which might cause you to look slightly watery or a little bit different, which I will talk about. So the last two to three weeks, I think, I cut out almost all sweeteners aside from things that were in my like fitness supplements. So like I kept in protein powders, EAAs, um, intra carbs, things like that. I still had the sweeteners that were in them, but this week I'm not having any sweeteners, like literally nothing, nothing in sauces, nothing in EAAs, nothing in monsters. I haven't had a monster in like three weeks, no energy drinks, no carbonated drinks, nothing like that. The reason why we decided to take it out at first, um, two to three weeks ago, was just to see how my body would respond. And what we found was that I was definitely kind of like less bloated um, overall, like not crazy bloating, not crazy stomach distension, but I definitely felt tighter after a couple of days of cutting out like extra added sweeteners. So like flavor drops, coffee syrups, chewing gum, stuff that I didn't really need, like low calorie jellies. Not that I didn't need it, like it's helped me definitely get through prep and have a little bit more to indulge in, but actually after cutting them out I was fine. The one thing that I really think that I do miss though is energy drinks, like that's the one thing which I definitely miss. Digestion though, I noticed improved a lot. Like actually it surprised me how much it did improve. So moving forward, I'll probably keep only the sweeteners in that I really like really want. So like maybe energy drinks, that's probably it to be honest. I don't necessarily need much else because at the end of the day, you want to see what your physique truly looks like when you're not putting kind of like any kind of artificial things in your body, especially in peak week, everything is eliminated, all sweeteners. Right now, my food is very bland. I'll actually take you through a couple of the meals which I'm having today. Today is my final low day of um, food prior to us like filling me up a little bit more with carbohydrates. Um, but it's not actually that exciting because your food starts to become low volume so that you know your tummy isn't really full of loads of kind of fibrous foods. And also because it's really bland food, like with no sauces or sweeteners, anything like that, it just ends up being like, not that excited to have a whole lot more food. But yeah, that is what we've done so far. On Sunday, we started tapering down energy expenditure. So Sunday was my last leg session where I had one rep in reserve for that and we took out kind of compound lifts. Then yesterday, on Monday, I had my penultimate upper body session, which was one to two reps in reserve. And tomorrow, Thursday, prior to Sunday's competition, I've got my last upper body session which will be a couple of reps in reserve today obviously first day i'm not doing any cardio we've tapered steps down from sunday from 14k now they're down to 10k tomorrow is my first day on 8k steps so by friday saturday i'll probably be on like 8k steps no cardio no training just chilling absolutely chilling and that's reflected a lot in my physique i already can see that like the definition in my muscles is there because my legs don't look as watery they're not holding as much um kind of inflammation anymore and then tomorrow thursday is the first day where i'm going to start to have a little bit more carbohydrates in my system i don't need a lot of carbohydrates to fill me out or fill me up because I do have a bit more muscle for bikini than some of the other bikini athletes perhaps who are, who are, you know, like first timers. And so I don't necessarily need to look full to the brim as someone who is in a, a higher category than me, such as, you know, figure or like a male bodybuilder would because that's just not the look that they go for in bikini. They don't want to see you like looking totally kind of fucking striated, peeled, shredded. That's that's not what the, the category is. So 
basically that's everything that's happened so far when it comes to water and sodium manipulation so far nothing i've kept my sodium and potassium I'm, i've been measuring my sodium and potassium for the last two weeks to make sure my electrolytes are balanced um and i've been keeping my water intake consistent at four and a half liters for the last couple of weeks as well so that way when it does come closer to show and danny says hey we need to put in a little bit of salt here we might need to bring water down then I've got all of those variables covered and ready to go. How that's gonna pan out, we'll play it by ear and I'll update you guys as I go along. So yeah, that is everything so far in terms of the technicalities. So it's a lot to kind of make sure that you are being on the ball with. There's no kind of messing around anymore um, when it comes to making sure that absolutely everything is being managed um, perfectly because what gets measured, gets managed, helps you perform the best you need to. The other thing this week, I've got so many appointments. I've got hair, nails, lashes. <sighs> Obviously I've had like all of my tan and registration and all of that come through. So I'm just trying to keep on top of like where I need to be and what I need to be doing and where I need to be in 15 minutes time, well need to leave in 15 minutes time, is the hairdressers. I'm going to get this fucking mop chopped I wanted it cut actually a fair bit earlier, but like there's no point in, in waiting also two weeks ago. Did I fuck when I bother getting up and go to the hairdressers? So my hair is actually quite long at the moment for bikini. It kind of touches the top of my glutes and it needs to be shorter. So I'm going to get a good three or four inches off. I'm actually going to have a look on my phone now. There's a couple of other bikini athletes who um, I'm going to compare my hair to and see what their hair is like and maybe get a little bit of inspo to take to the hairdressers. I've just had a little look through some of the IFBB bikini athletes and looked at their hair. So this is kind of what I'm thinking. This is Lauren Dannon Miller. She's incredible. She's These are all um, athletes that have black hair, straight like mine. Um, this is Nay. She's incredible. I think her hair is shorter than mine at the moment when it's straight, but I'd probably get mine shorter a little bit V-tapered like Lauren's hair. So this is what I'm thinking I'll do. Um, Ashley K. She's got incredible hair. Something like that. So it's V-tapered at the bottom. The reason that is, is because it helps your waist to almost look a little bit smaller the way that it's v-tapered there and it helps to make your glutes look really round so this is i think what i'm going to go for okay guys so this is one of the meals which i have on a rest day i actually have it twice so on my rest day i have four meals um and two of them i have twice so you'll only see two meals today if that makes sense um so this meal is literally just some yogurt, soy yogurt with some dark sweet cherries. It's mixed up with some protein powder and then there's one caramel rice cake in there. Most of the time people won't have protein powders or whey, dairy kind of things like that they might eliminate during peak week. Obviously as I'm vegan I find it very difficult to get in as much protein as I would need to. The protein that I use has got I've got one protein powder which I use which doesn't contain like artificial sweeteners in terms of sugar alcohols. The one that I've got contains stevia and only a little bit of stevia. It sits really well because it's got digestive enzymes in the blend as well. So this is something which I haven't eliminated because actually it doesn't cause me any issues whatsoever really. And also I need to keep my protein intake up. So this is the raw sport female um, elite repair protein it is awesome so i will be keeping that in but that is literally a tiny touch of, uh, of stevia in there is the only sweetener which i'll be having so i'm going to tuck into this and then hurry up and get my ass to the hairdressers and get this mop chopped so the way that yeah. I kind of need yeah, to have so it is V tapered. Need to be it more. So it makes my waist look small. Okay. If you know what I mean? How so short are you willing to go with that? I was thinking. So how she's got it from like Shoulder. her del all the way to that's that's basically where I need it. I, if not even like a little shorter, I can't have it covering my glutes because they have to see it. If that makes sense. Yeah. So that's the shortest. So, so it needs to be like. So to take that off there. Yeah. Like that. It's not too far off, to be fair. When you actually spit, it's, it's mainly here, isn't it? It needs to take like that off there. Yeah, literally yeah. that. And then start this from it, like, yeah. From yeah. There. Oh wow, that was me this morning. Yeah. Like, 
Oh, you look amazing. Thank you so much. So yeah, like it's a so 400, nice. 450 pound bikini. Like that's amazing. Why do I think so? and dusted look how glossy it is we've kind of had it v tapered so when i put it back it gives me a nice bit of rip i'll turn around actually now so you can see so this is what it looks like from the back i'm really happy with it i'm really really happy with it it definitely needed a little bit cut off well to be honest i've just been wearing it up because i was getting so sick of like how long it was so loving the new hair i'm now going to make my third meal of the day it's the one meal that i have today that you guys haven't seen yet which is just a salad with tofu and mock meat obviously it's my rest day it's my low carb day so there's really not many carbs going in and then after i've had this meal i'll have one more meal of like the yogurt bowl that you saw earlier and that's me done for the day so i'll show you that this is it i've literally just got iceberg lettuce tomatoes cucumber um I've got, these are the no beef strips from Naked Glory and some tofu. I've also got some peri peri seasoning in here. This medium peri peri chili sauce from Sainsbury's. It's only something silly like seven calories per tablespoon. So it's pretty good. And there's also no sweeteners in here. They're all natural flavors which is something to look out for in low calorie sources. So I'm gonna dig into this. And then I'm just gonna catch you guys tomorrow and update you how tomorrow goes. I'm expecting more food tomorrow. I don't know what more food I'm going to have. So yeah, I'll catch you tomorrow and we'll see what Thursday holds when I will be one, two, three. Thursday and we are a whole three days out so I got up this morning I've had my coffee I've done my check-in normal business obviously no cardio steps are only at 8k today so I'm actually gonna have to try not to get more steps than that I think that's probably what I'll just get from pottering around like a normal day anyway um, but I woke up this morning to my meal plan from Danny um, usually I do my own food my own kind of meal plan because Danny just gives me macros but she's pretty much just taken exactly what I've been eating from looking through my fitness pal and kind of worked up a meal plan for me today and then i've also got my final training session today so we're going to be shuffling um some more carbs into my system so i'll kind of show you what she sent through so there's a couple of meals here which i usually eat um but then she sent me my pre and my post workout meals and um she's also basically said making sure keeping water and sodium consistent which i have been doing and i need to send a post workout check-in in my bikini today so just to make sure that i'm really really being on the ball with everything i have um inputted all of this into chronometer which is basically um a really really detailed food tracker which breaks down a lot of nutrients in certain foods all the way down to things like minerals so it allows me to understand the amount of sodium and potassium that i am having to make sure that i'm keeping them equal and balanced so this is today's food and you'll see that i've got potassium at 2043 milligrams sodium is at 2082 milligrams so they're pretty much two grams there of each obviously water i've been tracking water to make sure that it's totally consistent like yeah weighing out my water and tracking it into my fitbit app to make sure that every single day i'm having four and a half liters so yeah we've been pretty on it making sure that everything is exactly as it needs to be after putting this into chronometer i've kind of 
of seeing that I've got about an extra 70, 75 grams of carbs today um, and, and protein just slightly lower due to the fact that um, we'll start to taper that down. Protein does take longer to digest, so we want to make sure that everything that's going into my body from tomorrow, super fast digesting and, you know, a little bit extra carbs to top me up, see how I look tomorrow, and then we'll just decide day on day from there. So, um... I am going to make my pre-workout meal now, which is baby rice and some protein powder. Um, I have found a hack that makes this a whole lot more enjoyable, to be honest. Baby rice, the reason why I'm having baby rice and not cream of rice is because cream of rice is full of sweeteners. Like cream of rice is sweet because it's full of sweeteners and we're eliminating all sweeteners. Baby rice is pure ground rice there's also no added sodium to baby rice so it's really really simple like as simple as you can get it's a lot more runny than cream of rice it's a nice smooth texture but the protein powder that i'm having because it doesn't really have any kind of sweeteners in it it doesn't taste amazing so i found a way that i can make it into a bit more of a pudding which i'm going to take you through now okay so before i make my baby rice i'll show you what i do every single day so this is the saxa 50 percent less sodium table salt half of it is sodium chloride the other half is potassium chloride which means that you're getting equal servings of potassium and sodium so this is helping me keep my electrolytes balanced as i'm only using this and i'm not using foods that are really high in sodium so i get my little drug dealer scales and then i put my little kind of salt pot on there and this is how i've been measuring out my salt for the last few weeks i have four grams and so i just weigh that out and then i know that for the rest of the day as long as i consume this and split it over my four meals then that's pretty much the the salt that i need to have in the day so it's a really easy way to just keep on top of things can you hear that how fucking typical is it that as soon as I decide I'm going to start to record a YouTube video, someone's drilling outside of my fucking house? He's literally cutting up the floor. I actually can't be asked. Let me shut the window and see whether that makes a difference. Okay, so going into this meal, we've got 50 grams of baby rice. Aptamil baby rice. It is elite compared to cow and gate. Don't ask why. The cow and gate just gets really fucking fluffy. This is like way more smooth. So I am going to put in 50 grams. The other thing that I've done is I've also half boiled the kettle. This is one trick that I use with cream of rice and baby rice is that I only ever half boil the kettle because when you put it in the microwave afterwards, if you put full boiling water in and then you also put it in the microwave, it just gets fucking like, like lava and it takes ages to cool down and it's not a nice texture. So only half boil the kettle or you could start from cold water, but you know, ain't nobody got time for that. So we are here in terms of the 50. So now get my trusty whisk and the half boiled water. Little bits at a time, little bits at a time. You can always put more water in, but you can't take water out, can you? Well, you fucking can, but you'd be there boiling it, which defeats the whole point of half boiling the kettle. Am I right or am I right? Okay, so. This is the kind of texture that we're looking at. This is what I mean compared to cream of rice. It's way more gloopy. So that's gonna go in the microwave now for two blasts of 30 seconds, a whisk after each blast. Okay, now we're gonna go in with 30 grams of protein powder. Whisk it in afterwards, just because sometimes protein can cook a little bit weird in the microwave. So you're better off being safe than sorry. Guess what the next step is? You whisk it again. Okay, so let me show you what we're dealing with now. So it's this nice chocolatey, carby 
kind of mixture, but it's quite runny. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cover it with cling film and put it in the fridge for probably two hours. Yeah, two hours until I eat my pre-workout meal. And it's gonna be like a really nice pudding style kind of texture. And then I'll just pop some fruit on top before I eat it. And that's it. Okay, so here we have it. Here is the kind of like pudding style cream of rice. There's 200 grams of strawberries on here. It's not cream of rice, it's baby rice. But you can see it makes it a bit thicker. Nice chocolatey. You can do this with normal cream of rice as well. So in summer, it's sometimes nice to do this instead of having it hot. But yeah, I'm gonna dig into this now and then go train in a little bit. So I'm just back from training now. I had the best fucking session I've had in so long. I can't explain to you. It was so good. I wasn't getting tired. I was having to try and leave reps in reserve rather than trying to not completely fail halfway through a set. Like I can't, carbs are a wonderful fucking drug, mate. Oh, carb me up, man. Inject that shit into my veins. Like, it's beautiful. Um, I'm just making my post-workout meal now. I've got to hurry up because I've got to go to the dentist in 15 minutes. And then I've got to go to my lashes appointment. Right, if you are planning a peak week, space your fucking appointments out as much as you can. Different days, different ends of the day. Just give yourself so much time so you're not rushing around like a mad woman. Um, but I will show you the meals once I've quickly made them up. I'm going to scrap them and then I've got to go. Um, so yeah, I was really happy though. I've just um, done some post-workout posing in my bikini, um, which obviously I'm not going to show you. You can wait to see what it looks like on show day. But I sent that over to Danny and I definitely look fuller. I definitely look more lively in my physique. So I'm quite happy with that. So yeah, things are good. Part one of the post-workout meal was some tofu, a little bit of mock meat, lettuce, tomatoes, spinach, veggies, you know, just all of that good stuff. And then part two was 50 grams of baby rice and 15 grams of dark chocolate. Um, and yeah, safe to say that this definitely went down an absolute treat. Hello, YouTube. It's Friday, it's the next day now. Yesterday, after I had those two meals, I went and got my lashes done. Let me show you. Holly, I fucking love you. Holly is my lash lady, she's also like a therapist. So it's quite nice that I've got the two in one and I don't have to pay for both. Um, she looks after me a lot and I appreciate her massively. Um, yesterday, after I got my lashes done, I ended up just being quite busy and working. In terms of food that I had yesterday, I pretty much had a repeat of like the salad and mock meat tofu meal that you saw with a couple of rice cakes and then just a small kind of like half a pot of yogurt, some protein powder and a couple more rice cakes with some fruit. Today is exactly the same in terms of food, but Danny has asked me to take out all veg. Um, so I'm literally just having little bits of tofu, um, mock meat, baby rice, protein powder, that's it. We're bringing down the volume now to make sure that I'm basically not having much fiber in my system so that my midsection can be as, as tight as possible for when I step on stage on Sunday in two days. Tomorrow will likely, depending on how I'm looking, we might, you know, have another higher day of carbs or we might just keep me at like baseline, depending on what I look like. So my plan of action today is I don't have a huge amount to do aside from getting my nails done and packing for show day. I wanna make sure that I've got everything possible today because that gives me a little bit of time tomorrow before I travel down to London um, to stay overnight to make sure that if I haven't got something, I've made sure that I've got time to get it tomorrow. But I've got, I'm pretty sure I've got everything and I'm gonna take you guys um, through everything that you need to pack for show day. However, now the most important thing that I need to do is hair removal. I need my whole body to be hairless. And I'm gonna take you through a little bit of kind of like skin prep information and hair removal information when it comes to prepping your body for the stage because you would be so fucking surprised at how far out you need to start thinking about this stuff and also how important it is. There are so many bodybuilders who I've watched their prep series and they've said that their tan has ended up being really shit just because they haven't prep their skin well enough and then they look shit on stage compared to everyone else like could you imagine because you haven't exfoliated your elbows because you've been a lazy grotty bastard that you actually end up placing badly fuck that absolutely fuck that so i'll also um answer some questions 
that you guys have um, sent me over on Instagram just to make sure that I'm giving you all the information you could possibly want to know. Some of it will be TMI. In fact, watching me cover myself in V in a minute is probably going to be TMI, but I don't know. Some people probably pay for that. Skin prep. Let's talk skin prep. So, if you are not a clammy, gross human, you would probably exfoliate at least once a week. Like, usually, even if you're not competing. When you are competing and you're kind of starting to get closer to your show, around six weeks out, you want to make sure that you are exfoliating twice a week. Um, you can use some kind of pH balanced scrub or you can just even use like exfoliating mitts and something like this Sanex gel. Um, this is pH balanced, really, really soft on your skin, natural pH. It's not gonna cause any kind of change in pH or to the chemicals of your skin, which could cause, you know, your tan to go funny or even just upset your skin if it is sensitive. Um, you don't need to fucking like go crazy abrasive on your skin. You just need to lightly exfoliate to remove those dead skin cells. And from six weeks out, you wanna be doing that about twice per week and you want to be moisturizing every single day. Like you need to, after you've exfoliated, to capture the moisture in your skin so that it doesn't dry out. About kind of the four weeks out mark, I started exfoliating kind of two to three times per week, kind of just increasing the frequency very slightly. And then this last week, so peak week, maybe like last 10 days before your show, every other day I've been exfoliating. Um, you can use exfoliating gloves, you can use exfoliating mitts, um, you can use exfoliating sponges like this one. There are so many options as to what you can use. But as I said, you know, just don't scrub yourself red raw. That's actually going to damage your skin and possibly cause your tan to sit quite badly. Don't use perfumed moisturisers. Use something more natural like, you know, your E45 creams, your baby creams, things like that, which are very, very good for people with like sensitive skin or, or things which are pH balanced, just so that you don't fucking mess anything up. Like you might as well be, you know, better off safe than sorry. So my skin right now, mate, if you could feel me, I feel like a fucking soft cloud. So I feel fantastic in terms of my skin. I feel like I've got a really, really good base for my tan. But then, hair removal. How the fuck are you gonna deforest your body is what you need to think about. So there's loads of different methods which you can do. If you do things like waxing, you definitely need to start doing that a good few months before your show. Because if you like wax the first kind of one or two weeks prior to your show and it doesn't react well with your skin, mate, you're gonna have wax strip marks on you when they do actually end up putting on your tan, which is fucked. So be careful in terms of making sure that your skin is used to the hair removal that you will be doing. For me, I'm gonna use various forms of hair removal. So when it comes to my legs and my underarms, I epilate, I use an epilator, which is basically just slower and more painful waxing that I do myself. I think in terms of what I would pay to get my legs and my underarms waxed on one occasion, is probably the price for what I paid for my epilator. If you can get through the pain of epilating, you know, once a month, the regrowth will also start to slow, then that is something which would be quite useful to consider. Alternatively, you know, just pay to, to get waxed and that regrowth will be finer. I have very, you know, dark hair. Um, so for me, I need to be on top of that. Then when it comes to the rest of your body, you can use something like Veet. Veet is what I am going to be using now to kind of get rid of um, the hair on my like arms and kind of my midsection. You do want to pretty much get rid of hair everywhere. And then just to make sure that you have got everything, a razor, but just make sure that your razor is not a fresh razor or a brand new one. Reason being is actually because a razor is always sharper the second time round when you use it because you've actually thinned the blades a little bit more than they were the first time that you've used it and you shave once. You actually remove some of the metal molecules chemistry. That's what I studied at uni. One hair removal method which I haven't covered and I have had in a very sensitive area for a little while now is laser hair removal. So again, laser, very similar to waxing. If your skin is not used to it, don't just suddenly do it. Also with laser, it takes a good few sessions for your hair to start to kind of become removed. So in my um, pruned lady garden area, I've been having laser for a little while now, so I'm pretty tired. 
too much for YouTube? Guys, it's too much. Excuse me, it's too much. I don't know. We're all friends here, right? Um, so I'm gonna go cover myself in V, remove all of my hair, and answer some of your questions. I wasn't joking when I told you I was gonna cover myself in V. I'm gonna do some quick fire questions whilst I wait for this hair removal cream to work. Is it weird that I'm stood here naked and that you know that I'm naked covered in cream? Probably. I'm also stood um, in my kitchen facing outwards because the fan in my bathroom's a bit loud. So if I also live outside of a primary school, thank God it's half term. Um, anyway, I'm gonna do some quick fire questions whilst this works its magic. Question number one, am I nervous about the competition? I think in life you will get nervous about anything that matters a lot to you because you put a lot of emphasis on it because you care about it a lot. So of course I'm gonna be nervous because it means a huge fucking amount, but not, you know, so nervous that it's gonna make me not have fun because like now is the time to be fucking happy about what I've achieved. Um, this taxi driver's just pulled up. Will I be vlogging show day? Um, I don't think you guys maybe appreciate how mental show day is. Like I literally am going to have to get up at 5.30 in the morning to get my makeup done. I'm also going to have to get my tan done, make sure that I'm doing my hair, I've got everything ready. I'm checking in with my coach every single like few hours. Like it's fucking intense. And also like it's a special day. It's a really special moment that I want to live in and not be living in it through a camera. I want to be present and it's not to say that I might film like snippets and stuff like that throughout the day, but there's gonna be plenty of show day footage and I'll do a whole recap. But yeah, it's a special day and sometimes having to worry about what you're filming for YouTube can take away from that. The best and worst aspects of peak week. Best aspects, more food, more rest, chilling the fuck out, it's awesome. Worst is probably the fact that you're really, really busy with appointments and making sure that you need to get everything ready and you need to know inside out where you need to be, what you need to do. What is the purpose of carb loading before a competition? So carb loading, prior to your show, a few days before your show, you tend to be completely depleted, like have no carbs or glycogen stored in your muscles. When you store glycogen in your muscles, you also store water. So the purpose of carb loading is after you've been depleted for so long and your muscles are so flat because they haven't got any of these molecules in there, when you take in a big influx of carbohydrates as well as water that comes along with that when you store that glycogen in your muscles you get your muscles looking really really full and as a bodybuilder you're there to show off your muscles right so that's the purpose of carb loading okay final question before i need to go and wash this off at this point does the excitement to step on stage outweigh the hunger or low energy so peak week i haven't been hungry i haven't had low energy because i've been resting i haven't had to do cardio my steps have come down and i've had more food like peak week is a week where you literally are recovering your body and resting it to be able to perform when you get on stage and also to look your best anyway i'm gonna get myself looking like a little naked mole rat mate when i'm telling you now i've never been this smooth in my fucking life like i literally feel like a slippery snake i'm a snake i'm a slithery little snake a snake hairless oh yes um <laughs> I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good. Moisturised and smooth and exfoliated. Now I'm going to go and get my nails done. Then we come back. We get ready to pack. And second check in with Danny. The last couple of days I've been checking in with her twice a day. Later on in the day to kind of mimic like when I'll be on stage. Um, and to kind of like see what I look like later on in the day. So yeah. I will catch you guys when I'm back from getting my nails done. So it's a little bit later on in the day. I have had my nails done. I'll show you guys, manicure and pedicure, mate, nearly fell asleep. Just two hours of being pampered. It's been absolutely beautiful. So this is what I've got done. So I just went for largely natural, but with a little bit of sparkle. I didn't want anything which would clash with my bikini. So I'm really, really happy with these. To be honest, I think I might have nails like this more regularly. I always have acrylics done, um, but I quite like this natural look. And then of course, got a pedicure done two normal white tips the final thing to do today before tomorrow when i will be one day out is to make sure that i have everything which i need before i head down to london so 
it's time to pack for show day and I'm going to take you through everything that I need to have. So what I'm going to do for any of you guys watching who might also be competing is I'm going to leave a list in the description box below of everything which I am going to be packing or which I think you need. When I showed you in last week's vlog the um, prep journal which I have, it also has a show day checklist on it and there's a few bits which I've added myself um, just because I think there's some extra things which I will need to take but I'm about to go through and tick everything off so obviously first and foremost my bikini my bikini is safe and sound in its box with the teddy bear stuffing with the spare gems with with everything which I need so bikini all there shoes you're not going to be able to step on stage without posing heels. I'm going to give these a clean because I think I've had these for like 10 months and I haven't cleaned them once. So they need to be sparkling. Jewellery. All of the jewellery here. I've got my different earrings, my bracelets, my rings. All the jewellery is here. So I've got that. Obviously when you are backstage you don't want to be, you know, just always in your bikini. You might want to be covered up a little bit. So I have a black robe here. And this one actually is from black eyes bikinis and it says my name on it which is fucking awesome shout out to black eyes bikinis for making that as special as it is i love it um then of course to make sure that your knickers don't fall down on stage and that your boobs don't slip the bikini bum which I showed you guys in last week's vlog. I also ordered some extra fashion tape off Amazon because to be honest, it's cheaper. Secondly, there's more of it. When I tell you that you stick your knickers down, you stick them fucking down. Um, so I've got that. I've also got some bikini bite, which is liquid um, kind of glue for your bikini top. Obviously I'm gonna take a mirror just for obvious purposes i need to see what i'm doing i'll take my own makeup i am getting my makeup done but i'll take also my own in case i need any touch-ups and also for like the next day before i'm out for dinner things like that hair styling products hair brush i'm going to do my own hair for show day so i've got my straighteners i've got my hairspray i don't need much else because i'm literally going to have my hair pretty much as it is now to be honest i'm just going to have it dead straight i don't need to worry about anything because it's simple so when I go down tomorrow, I need to go and get my first coat of tan in the evening when I register the day before the show. I will be wearing my bronzy. This is a black jumpsuit, which I'm going to wear from when I get my first coat of tan put on to when I get my second coat of tan put on. This is going to protect my tan. It's really, really loose. And it's just gonna make sure that I don't, you know, have any kind of tight fitting clothing, which is gonna smudge it. As well as that, um, just for like the following day, I do have um, just black clothing as well, like black loose clothing um, for the following day. Because in all honesty, you don't know how long that tan's going to stay on your body even after you've washed it off. And also, that takes me on to the fact that I have brought with me some tough stuff body scrub and and exfoliating sponge because straight after the show I'm going to want to get as much of that you know really really orangey tan off as possible further to that to make sure that you're not getting fined by the hotel you need to make sure that you are bringing your own bed sheets and your own towels so black towel to make sure that any kind of tan stains anything like that is on this towel and not on the hotel's towel which they'll end up charging me something like silly money for when i could just get some cheap black bed sheets which is what i've done these are some black bed sheets which i'm just going to take down with me another thing to mention is that when you are backstage you're going to want to basically have somewhere comfy to sit something nice to kind of be wrapped in because you'll probably be a little bit cold hopefully you won't be cold backstage you'll need to kind of pump up and get warm before you go on stage but prior to then when you're waiting to go on stage like backstage is literally just like fucking floor there's not much there so I'm taking a blanket with me. I will sit on this, I will cover myself in this if I need to stay warm um, to stop me from going cold. So it's important to have something like a blanket and a pillow backstage for you. Obviously your tan, you don't want to kind of wear tight socks or shoes, anything like that to smudge the tan on your feet. So flip flops, 
flip flops are a must. Also, these are a fucking bargain. One pound from Poundland. Like, beautiful stuff. Again, more tan protection. What a lot of people don't realise is like when you do things in the evening like, I don't know, brushing your teeth and stuff like that, you don't want any of that fucking water to like run onto your hand or like, you know, just when you're kind of doing things that might involve water, say you're making coffee, mate. Gloves. Gloves to protect your tan are such a must. So yeah, disposable gloves to protect your tan fuck having your tan run all the way down your arm could you imagine something like that also even worse fuck having piss stains down your leg Ugh, nasty. from washing off your tan because you have dribbled pee everywhere which is what these are for yes you piss into a cup or you drill a hole in the bottom and piss through it up to you but Plastic cups, very important. If you see anyone on stage with a streak down their leg, you know what it is. A couple of other hygiene -y bits, makeup wipes, kind of hygiene wipes, toilet wipes, things like that. You're gonna wanna take those just so that you're not caught out if they don't have any, like you'd rather be safe than sorry. And another you'd rather be safe than sorry thing is a little sewing kit. So in case something happens to your bikini, like what are you gonna do? What the fuck are you gonna do if a bikini strap breaks? Like, get yourself a sewing kit. And even if you can't sew, someone backstage might be able to, but you've got the equipment, you've got the tools, just find the handyman. Another important thing is probably, in case something were to happen, it's best that you have like plasters on you. I've got both blister plasters and normal plasters to take with me. I actually found recently in the last week because I was posing so much my shoes almost started to rub a little bit on my foot. I don't want to have painful feet whilst I'm on stage. Like I don't want to be kind of like having to pose in a specific way because my foot hurts. So plasters. Again another tan related thing because you're not able to wear deodorant or perfume or anything like that because it will smudge your tan. A lot of deodorants have certain metals and minerals in them which prevent you being stinky. However these metals and minerals can react with your tan and they can actually make it go green. I don't know whether you guys might have seen some people like get a greeny tinge if their jewellery reacts badly with their tan. Things like that. So you can't wear deodorant there's a couple of tricks as to what you can do on your underarms or certain areas which might be a little bit smelly to stop you from stinking. Option one I've heard people say is they put a little bit of baby powder on that area to absorb any kind of sweat. Option number two, tumble dryer sheets. These are nice smelling summer breeze tumble dryer sheets which you can literally you, you put them in the tumble dryer to make your clothes smell nice, but these are also absorbent, so you can dab them under your armpits and basically stop you from being smelly. So, there's another trick for you. Of course, you're going to want to make some memories of show day, so you don't want your phone to die. Portable charger. This one's got like four full charges, if not more in it, so that will last me all day. I will be taking the camera that I'm vlogging on, but I obviously can't show you that because I can't film the camera with itself. But I've got my battery packs for it um, and I'll be taking like my tripod, etc. And also I'm gonna take my headphones in case I did want a little bit of quiet time at any point. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna be like backstage, whether I want my quiet time or whether I'll just wanna chat with people because I'll be so excited. So we'll see, but I am kind of someone when I train, I do need to really get in the zone. So who's to say that I'm not gonna be exactly the same backstage and just want a little bit of quiet time. Obviously one of the most important things about going onto a bodybuilding stage is to show off your muscles. And you're going to want to make sure that your muscles are pumped full of blood to make them look as full and big as possible and so I've got my resistance band kit it's a really cheap one from Amazon these are super useful because they've just got D handles attached just a simple resistance band with a D handle attached I'll be doing kind of front raises lap raises pumping up my rear delts a little bit with bikini you don't particularly need to you know do any pump ups of your legs but this is what I'm going to be doing backstage just to get some fullness in my upper body. And of course, I'm not going to be able to do that without something to assist me with a pump. 
So it's very individual what people are going to eat on show day, but in terms of taking your food down, if you are having anything which needs to kind of be kept cold for a little while when you get to your hotel, you would benefit from having one of these, which is just an insulated cooler bag. This is a nice size one with enough food for a day or two. And I'm gonna put some ice packs in here and you know, just take down any food which I might need, which needs to stay cold. From speaking to Danny in terms of on show day, we are going to not have any protein in my system because it does take a little bit longer to digest. We're just going to want some simple carbohydrates which are very easy to digest. And just to slow that digestion a little bit, we're going to want a fat source. And so my carbohydrate and fat source, what I'll be nibbling on throughout show day will be caramel rice cakes and some vegan dark chocolate this is what i will be eating on show day and of course on show day to help your muscles look fuller and to draw water into your muscle cells you're going to need the help of a little bit of salt that is everything that is everything in terms of what i need for on show or that is show related stuff obviously there's other bits like you know general toothbrush and fucking phone charger and stuff that's all standard but in terms of show related things that's everything so i've just had a voice note from danny i'm going to listen to that now and see what she says about tomorrow perfect thank you millie we'll have a look at how you're looking in the morning in terms of tomorrow's food um steps will definitely be low at least where today's have been if not lower and um there will of course be no cardio tomorrow um but yeah we'll see how you're looking in the morning in terms of tomorrow's food and we'll go from there so you heard the boss lady that is it tomorrow we'll assess how i'm looking in the morning and what i'm going to eat throughout the day in the morning i'm just gonna wash my hair shower make sure i've got everything packed maybe get a little bit of steps in have perhaps a little bit of food and then drive down about midday and then get my base coat of tan in the evening register and that's it we're ready to go i will have this video out for you guys on saturday when i am one day out i really hope that you guys enjoy i am going to enjoy show day be in the moment but i will film some bits for you so i just wanted to say the biggest fucking thank you ever to all of you guys for your support because it has been so like i've been really taken aback by how much support i've got and i can't explain how grateful i am to all of you for supporting me along this journey of you know getting me to the point where I'm gonna step on stage for the first time. It's so exciting. I really, really do appreciate so much if you guys drop a like, a comment, subscribe, and turn on the post notifications to see my show day vlog and everything else that I've got coming up next. Um, yeah, I really, really do appreciate it. I've tried to put so much effort into the YouTube for you guys to follow along and hopefully learn a lot from it. So it means the world to me when you guys do support my channel. So. Thank you. This is the final video before I compete. Appreciate you guys millions. Let's go fucking get it.